On April 19, 2023, the Food and Drug Administration approved Polituzumab Vidotin PIIQ, Polyvi, Genentech, Inc. with a rituximab product, cyclophosphamide, doxorubicin, and prednisone, RCHP, for adult patients who have previously untreated diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, DLBCL, not otherwise specified, NOS, or high-grade B-cell lymphoma, HGBL, and who have an International Prognostic Index, IPI, score of 2 or greater. Approval was based on POLARIX, NCT 03274492, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial in 879 patients with previously untreated large B-cell lymphoma and an IPI score of 2 to 5. The trial evaluated the superiority of substituting polituzumab vedotin for vincristine in the RCHOP, rituximab, cyclophosphamide, doxorubicin, vincristine, and prednisone, regimen. Patients were randomized, one-to-one, -to, -one, to receive either polituzumab vedotin plus RCHP, pola plus RCHP, or RCHOP for six 21-day cycles, followed by two additional cycles of rituximab alone in both arms. The main diagnoses were de novo DLBCL, NOS, 84%, and HGBL, 11%. Dose. The recommended dose of polituzumab vedotin is 1.8 mg per kilogram as an intravenous infusion every 21 days for 6 cycles in combination with RCHP. Patients should be premedicated with an antihistamine and antipyretic and receive prophylactic granulocyte colony stimulating factor. Mechanism of action. Polituzumab vedotin is an antibody drug conjugate consisting of a CD79B-directed antibody, a microtubule-disrupting agent called monomethyl orostatin E MMAE, and a cleavable linker that holds the components together. CD79 is a heterodimer composed of CD79A and CD79B. Responsible for signal transduction, CD79 forms a complex with the B-cell receptor BCR, and is almost exclusively expressed on B-cells, including malignant B-cells. Most importantly, CD79B gained increasing attention as a promising therapeutic target as it plays an essential role in BCR expression, transport, and functions such as B-cell proliferation and differentiation. Once the antibody component binds to CD79B, polituzumab vedotin is internalized, and lysosomal proteases cleave the linker to release MMAE in the cell. MMAE is a microtubule disrupting antimyotic agent that exerts cytotoxic effects against malignant B cells. It binds to microtubules, inhibits mitosis by interfering with tubulin and tubulin polymerization, and induces apoptosis in dividing B cells. Absorption. After the first polituzumab vedotin dose of 1.8 mg per kilogram, the mean, plus or minus SD, Cmax of antibody conjugated MMAE, and unconjugated MMAE were 803, plus or minus 233, nanogram per milliliter and 6.82, plus or minus 4.73, nanogram per milliliter, respectively. The mean AUCINF of antibody conjugated MMAE and unconjugated MMAE were 1860, plus or minus 966, day by nanogram per milliliter and 52.3, plus or minus 18.0, day by nanogram per milliliter, respectively. Protein binding. MMAE is 71% to 77% bound to plasma proteins. Its blood to plasma ratio is 0.79 to 0.98, in vitro. Metabolism. Polituzumab vedotin is expected to undergo catabolism into small peptides, amino acids, unconjugated MMAE, and unconjugated MMAE-related catabolites. MMAE is metabolized by 3 Cypriot pounds A4 fifths. Route of elimination. Polituzumab vedotin is predominantly excreted in feces, as well as in urine to some extent. Half-life. The terminal half-life of polituzumab vedotin is approximately 12 days, 95% C, 8.1 to 19.5 days, at cycle. The terminal half-life of unconjugated MMAE is approximately 4 days after the first dose of polituzumab vedotin. Clearance. The predicted clearance of polituzumab vedotin is 0.9 L per day. Food interactions. 
Exercise caution with grapefruit products. The active ingredient of colatuzumab vedotin, monomethyl orostatin E, MMAE, is a CYP3A4 substrate and grapefruit may increase MMAE plasma concentrations. Adverse reactions. The most common adverse reactions with POLA plus RCHP is greater than or equal to 20%, excluding laboratory abnormalities, where peripheral neuropathy, nausea, fatigue, diarrhea, constipation, alopecia, and mucositis. Grade 3 to 4 laboratory abnormalities is greater than or equal to 10%, where lymphopenia, neutropenia, hyperuricemia, and anemia. Peripheral neuropathy developed or worsened in 53% of patients, with resolution in 58% after a median of 4 months. Serious adverse reactions occurred in 34% of patients, including febrile neutropenia and pneumonia. 